one. Welcome back, everybody, to Hoops HD's continuing 2024-2025 preseason coverage. This is our West Coast Conference preview show, Ooh. take two. We had a little technical difficulty. In a, yeah, a you tried to one. turn my microphone off. How uh, could you but... not want me to talk? <laughs> I got David Griggs over there, John yes, Sleeka, John Titel as well. And if you are here for the American preview show, Griggs, are you in the right spot? Well, sort of, but it's way, way, way up there. You got to scroll. You probably have to scroll up. How about the A10? Y- yeah, it's it's up there, but not quite as high. It's right below the American. How about the Mountain West? That one's just right up there. Oh, how I can the, hear it. How about the Big South? The Big South uh, is, uh, I think that's next week. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other conferences you want, check out the season preview tab. But this is our West Coast Conference preview show. And it involves, of all the podcasts we're doing today, the only conference with a team that is in the preseason top 25 polls and pretty high up there as well. Titel, let me start with you. The Gonzaga Bulldogs enter the season as a number six team preseason. Uh, they were in the Sweet 16 last year. And uh, they may be underranked at number six. What do you think? Love that call. Uh, plenty of transfers for Coach Few. Caleb Battle from Arkansas. Braden Smith from Colgate. Michael Ajayi from the in-state Pepperdine. Um, he also brings back a ton of talent. First team all-conference point guard and Ryan Nemhard. First team all-conference center and Grant Ek. Um, a tough schedule starting out on opening night with Baylor at like 11.30 Eastern. So, like, please don't wake me up for it. Um, this is a legit national title contender. And um, we'll see how they get it done. Yeah. Uh, Sleeka, what do you think? Do you, how, how good is this Gonzaga team? Well, first of all, I want to know when uh, Pepperdine got annexed into the state of Washington, if we're talking about quote unquote in state food. In or in conference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I think obviously with EK and uh, Hickman and Nemhard, you've got like a core three. You've also got Steel Venners, who was a a high-profile score from Eastern Washington two years ago who sat out last year for the Bulldogs. But Gonzaga is going to have their usual murderer's row in the, the out-of-conference schedule with Baylor, Arizona State, San Diego State, the battle for Atlantis. And you also get neutral court games against uh, Kentucky and UConn, where Kentucky is a de facto home game in Seattle and UConn being a de facto road game against Mass Square Garden. Plus, you also got a game against UCLA in the two billion with a B dollar game in the Intuit Dome in uh, Los Angeles, the new home of the Clippers. Yeah, this is a uh, going to be a real good Gonzaga team, I think, this year. Right? Griggs, yeah. they, they they actually started off real slow last year, came on strong, uh, but were not the conference regular season or tournament champions last year. That went to a team that only lost once in West Coast Conference play all season, and that was in the regular season finale against the Zags. I'm talking about the St. Mary's Gales, who had a great year last year. Uh, can they do anything close to that again this year? Uh, I don't think they're as good. I, well, I, let, I, let, I, let, let me let me qualify that. Great year until they ran into the Grand Canyon Antelopes in the NCAA tournament, but go ahead now. Yeah, well... <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that I, I think that they can get back to the NCAA tournament. I think they can be inside the bubble and I think that they can win a game in the round of 64. I know that they didn't do that last year, but they were certainly good enough to do it. Uh, they're not going to repeat as conference champions. I would be shocked if they did. You're right about Gonzaga. We were saying the longest time that like they didn't have any wins on their profile that jumped out at you until they got the big one at Kentucky. It sort of turned their season around. I, I think Gonzaga is a Final Four caliber team, and I think um, St. Mary's is an NCAA tournament caliber team. I, I think there's a cavern between the two. Okay. Uh, well, Titel, is there anyone else that, that, that could challenge up there? Like maybe the San Francisco Dons? I hope so. Um, I got to interview Coach Gerlison earlier this month. I was pretty impressed. He's got 20 win seasons in each of his first two years. Should have beaten Cincinnati in the NIT last March before the dagger three from Seamus Lukosius ruined his season. Uh, He's got skies from six foreign countries on his roster, and he does not think this conference is done with realignment. Um, So foreshadowing, perhaps. Uh, It lost two big guys, Jonathan Mobo and Mike Shottam Jumps. Uh, Does return first team all conference point guard Marcus Williams, the conference rookie of the year in Ryan Beasley, and two other starters, Malik Thomas 
and, and a widow, Newbury. You talk about realignment with this conference. Of course, we mentioned earlier during one of our prior podcasts that, that Gonzaga is on their way out in a couple of years. Uh, Seattle and Grand Canyon are on their way into this conference here, here soon. And we have a couple of teams that are temporarily in this conference, a little <laughs> two year, two year stint for the uh, remaining two Pac-12 teams of Washington State and Oregon State. Uh, Washington State's Sleeko was in the tournament last year as a seven seed, uh, albeit good. from another conference. Well, there's going to be some uh, parallels to uh, what is it? St. Louis, who is masquerading as Indiana State, although in this case, you're going to have Eastern Washington, yeah. who's going to be masquerading as Washington State, since uh, Kyle Smith... Well, were, they, were they eight miles apart and uh, never played the NCAA tournament? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, except uh, with Kyle Smith taking the job at Stanford, now you got... David Riley moving over from Eastern Washington to Washington State. So, and, and most of Eastern Washington also moving over with him. Yeah, now you got four notable players <laughs> who were with the Eagles last year that are now going to be playing for the Cougars this year. So, get to know the names Cedric Coward, Ethan Price, Dane Eric Stuff, and uh, the Juan Watts. Now, if you want to talk about something cool that's going to be part of Washington State's schedule, they're going to be playing Northern Colorado. And then they're going to be playing Eastern Washington and Spokane. So, yes, that is both halves of the No Koei Wu Cup that we mentioned in Under the Radar. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, in all seriousness, though, Titan, Washington State, uh, can this team get back in the NCAA tournament this year with all these new pieces? So this, we talked earlier about St. Louis in our other podcast in terms of new coach bringing in old players. Yeah. And- up the system quickly i see a lot of uh analogies to that but um it's replacing an entire roster so it's asking a lot of these guys who are not high major caliber talent to come in and try to beat gonzaga's and st mary's of the world that's asking a lot griggs uh how about santa clara uh, I, i've seen them picked pretty high in the conference heading the season behind adama alpha ball and, and, and players like that yeah, Santa Clara has won 20 or more games three years in a row. Sort of a nice little run there by Herb Sendak. And uh, you mentioned that the expectations are real high this year. They did – there has been some roster turnovers, but they had they went to the portal, got some solid D1 caliber players, some standout JUCO players. I, I don't know if they get all the way inside the bubble, but I could see them winning 20 games again and doing very well in the conference – uh, not finishing as high as Gonzaga or St. Mary's, but still pretty good. Okay. Uh, Sleeka, how about the other new team here? How about Oregon State? Uh, uh, and, and maybe the question really should be, is, is Wayne Tinkle really on, is seriously on the hot seat at this point? Well, he did go to the <laughs> Elite Eight in uh, 2021, but that's not going to warrant a lifetime contract, even at a, a place like Oregon State. only seeing a few players of note as Michael Rattage, who's going to be their one returning player of note from last year. And then you get a couple transfers in DeMarco Minor coming from Southern Illinois, Edwardsville, and Parsa Falak, who's going to be transferring from Southern Utah. I feel like there's going to be a lot of rebuilding for Oregon State, but instead of now getting beaten up by Arizona, UCLA, USC, and Oregon, now you're just uh, going to be taking it on the chin against uh, Gonzaga, St. Mary's, and probably half the WCC, if not more. And Portland, if it's Portland Pacific and Pepperdine, you got big problems there uh, that are taking that they're yeah, the taking on the chin from. Let Go me ask you this real quick. Uh, well, let mostly Titel, but I guess all of you is the West Coast Conference perhaps a better fit basketball wise, maybe not institutionally and football wise, uh, than the Pac-12 for in Oregon State, who. Again, most of the time, they did have the Elite Eight run, but it was preposterous. They just walked out of the Pacific Ocean. They needed to win the conference tournament just to get in. It was one of the more improbable runs of all time. Could they, does this give them a chance to be a little more competitive? Uh, Because like Stalika said, you're only competing against two heavyweights instead of UCLA, Arizona, the gamut that was the Pac-12. The short answer is yes. The longer answer is like, Beavers have gotten some guys in the past. You might have heard of Gary Payton. Like they have a yeah. proud history, and 
I understand Gary Payton is not walking through that door, but like if they get somebody like that, then they can absolutely compete in basketball, football. I think there is less of a history, but like again, anything's possible. Yeah. Well, there's no history for football in the West Coast. So, <laughs> uh, Titel, uh, while we got you here, is there anybody else that you think might contend for to to be? at or near the top of this conference, not at, but maybe near the top of the conference that we haven't mentioned, a team like a Loyola Marymount or a Portland or anything like that? I'll go with not Portland. I think uh, yeah. LMU might, but again, uh, John used the, the term chasm earlier when talking about the other conference. I think this is very much like Gonzaga St. Mary's at the top and everybody else far, far below. All right. Uh, we got Portland, Pacific, San Diego, Pepperdine, um, I don't know what Steve Lavin's doing at San Diego, but it's it's not looking good so far. I mean, apparently, he doesn't like the transfer portal. Also, is is the word. So uh, I don't know how you how you compete, Griggs, at the D one level anymore if you don't go if you don't take transfers. Well, yeah, I I think you're right, and I actually it I don't blame him for not liking it. Uh, there's something to be said about wanting to bring players in and have the four or five year relationship where you build and develop, but that's just the second you do, if that's the, the route you want to take, be ready for them to leave. Uh, because I, I, I think if that's the route you want to take, I tell you should be coaching the Ivy league. Am I correct? But who would want to do that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, anyhow, that is the West Coast Conference. Like we said, there's a couple of really great teams at the top, and then I think there is a chasm here. Uh, I Let me go first here. I'm going to take two teams in this league. I take Gonzaga to win the regular season title. St. Mary's is going to make the NCAA tournament. That's it. But each of you, I'll ask those same questions as well as any of the final thoughts. Stalika, let me start with you. Yeah, I think we can go ahead and uh, Sharpie and Gonzaga to win both regular season and the uh, – conference tournaments albeit they're only going to need the final two rounds as opposed to the 10 la 10 step wcc ladder which may or may not be sponsored by warners then i would also throw in saint mary's as the other uh, at large ncaa tournament bid but as far as a final thought when gonzaga does move on is the west coast conference going to go back to what it was during most of the 90s where it seemed like every conference member was taking turns representing them in the NCAA tournament before a superpower finally emerged for the better part of a quarter century. I, I did want to throw this out here before I go to you, Ty. Tell you mentioned the West Coast Conference tournament. I got to give them a shout out. They have with the two more teams this year. They've extended their ladder. Oh my if you, God. it is now a six round tournament. If you are the tenth or the eleventh seed, you would have to win six games. Uh, not quite. I think it's six days actually because they have. Brought, Is that gonna fit on the screen during. They, the they, they, it would be six games in six days if if you're the tenth or eleventh seed and you want the automatic bid. I and I don't even know how we're gonna fit it in there when we get that conference tournament tab up and going, yeah. but we'll figure that out at some point here. Titel, you're up. <laughs> I think this is Gonzaga's league to lose. I kind of thought that last year and I was wrong, but uh, I will go give him the double just like Stalika did. I think St. Mary's is also looking very good to make the NCAA tournament. So I will set the over under at two and a half and take the under. Um, when the Zags leave for the Pac-12 in 2026, um, I think this is going to be, I don't know if we're going to see any more significant realignment in recent times. In the past 27 years, They've won 20 conference tourney titles. They finished second each of the other seven times. They've made 24 straight tourney appearances. This is going to leave a gaping hole, as we've said earlier in the conference. As far as my final thought about the, uh, I'll stick with the Zags. Uh, you remember Courtney Vandersloot? She was a point guard at Gonzaga. Only women's player in WC history who was three-time conference player of the year. Only one who was three-time conference tourney MVP. She was unstoppable. First D1 player, male or female, with 2,000 points and 1,000 assists in her career. And, as timing would have it, as the backup point guard for the New York Liberty, she is potentially one minute away from winning her second WNBA title in the past four years. Good luck, Courtney. Good luck, Courtney. Uh, Griggs, let me let me go over to you to, to, to finish this show off. Just a quick note there. Titel mentioned the realignment, though. Uh, we may have to have a serious discussion 
not next year, but the year after. So whether or not the West Coast Conference yeah. actually moves under the radar at that point, I, I uh, think it does. Uh, but but let me we'll have that discussion. But we'll we'll yeah. We'll uh, table I, that for now. We got the Zags right. this year or next. So. I I think two teams get in. You'll never guess which two. And I think Gonzaga wins the league. It is hard when you're Gonzaga to be the showcase opponent every time you go on the road and you know, San Francisco is sold out and Santa Clara is sold out. St. Mary's certainly sold out. Wazoo is going to be am amazing. I don't know if they can, if they absolutely do the double and run the table and go undefeated all the way through the conference tournament. But I think Gonzaga is, is good enough to do it. It wouldn't shock me if they did. This is a final four, I think caliber team, uh, they have not won it all at, at any point in their history, but since 2014, every NCAA tournament that we've had, they've gone to either the Sweet 16 or further. That is a remarkable accomplishment. The last time they missed the Sweet 16, most of the players on their team now were either 8, 9, or 10 years old. That's incredible. That is. Um, it's been a wild, amazing run here. Uh, but that's it for the West Coast Conference preview. That's it for our all four of our conference tur conference preview shows for the evening. Uh, check the three of them up out there. Check out our season previews tab up there. But on behalf of David Griggs, John Salika, and John Titel, I'm Chad Sherwood. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back again a little over a week from now. We'll be with our under the radar preview show and all kinds of more preseason content still to come. Talk to you real soon.